Welcome back, everybody. This is Zach with New Angle Sports Talk. Today we're going to be recapping Game 3, 76ers, Toronto Raptors. But before we get started, as usual, guys, the highlights are going to be on the screen so you can follow along as well, too. Um, before we jump in, though, remember to go ahead and like, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button and even hit that little bell notification so that you get all the updates uh, and all the new videos once they, once they get released. So um, as usual, guys, let's just get started. Let's just jump right in. Um, before we talk about the first quarter highlights a little bit, um, I wanted to talk about a little bit leading up to this game. So if you watched game one and game two, you would know that Joel Embiid has not been his normal self at all in the series. He's Again, I, I predicted this, or I, I mentioned that the key matchup that I thought in this series would have been Marcus Hall and Joel Embiid. Uh, that, to me, was the, the key highlight to look at uh, when you're watching these games, and that was definitely the factor in Game 1 and Game 2. Game 3 was a lot different, though. Joel Embiid got loose. We'll talk about it all as well, too. But just to kind of give you, again, some reference as far as how Joel Embiid has been playing in the first two games, he went 5 of 18 shooting, so not not very good shooting um, in the uh, the first game. 16 points, though, so he, he was able to get a lot of points from the free throw line. Um, game two, same thing. He gets a lot of free throws. That's what he does. But he only shot uh, seven shots. He was two of seven. So, again, he wasn't as productive, especially on the offensive end, that you'd expect. But he did have a really good back um, ba- bounce back game in game three. Now, game two, the 76ers did win. Uh, a lot of it came from Jimmy Butler, and he was able to kind of take those reins and kind of lead the team to a victory in Game 2. That was a really big deal because they had, they didn't have home court advantage and they were able to split the series to kind of even it up a little bit so that when they came back to Philadelphia, there wasn't as much pressure on them and they were able to kind of play their brand of basketball, which, again, like I said already, they definitely did that in Game 3. Um, but let's just jump right in, guys. Let's get started. I've talked enough about it so far. Let's just jump right in. Uh, to start off the game, the 76ers got off to a quick 7-0 run. Uh, but the Raptors were able to kind of bounce back and, uh, you know, kind of not you kind of mitigate the damage a little bit, so to speak, whenever uh, the 76ers had their early push. But one reason the 76ers were able to get off on such a hot note kind of early on, uh, their their starters had played really well. But throughout the entire quarter as well, they had really good bench play um, from their bench players when they subbed them in. Their bench players really came up to play and were very, very effective, but also very efficient as well, too. Now, Jimmy Butler did move to a point guard at that point whenever some of the subs came in, and that was actually pretty interesting. That was something that they had talked about as well, too, on the game, was that when Simmons goes to the bench, they actually put in Jimmy Butler to kind of run the point, and again, it kind of kept them under control, uh, kept them kept kept themselves with a, like a level head, so to speak, and were able to kind of make sure that they were kept on running their game plan, because as you know, Jimmy Butler's a vet, he's a, he's a really good player in this league, and he knows how to run the offense, in my opinion. Um, Joel Embiid had a fantastic uh, quarter, uh, just you know the entire game. He had a fantastic game, and just one quick highlight of Joel Embiid. He ended the quarter with nine points. He was their leading scorer, but like I said, they did get contribution from just everybody, uh, especially on the bench when their subs came in. Uh, Danny Green has not had a very good, really series just in general. N- hasn't had a great playoff run as of right now. He was in a really bad shooting slump. But he did go three for three um, from three-point land. Um, he didn't make any other shot besides the three-pointer, so he ended the, the quarter with nine points. Kawhi Leonard ended the, the quarter with nine points, and Pascal Siakam ended the quarter with nine points. So they kind of relied on those three guys um, and kind of to carry on their offensive load a little bit. And that's kind of how the story of the game was. They, they The Toronto Raptors really focused their offense around a, a few couple people that's kind of how it was in uh, game two as well too but uh you know th- th- this is kind of what it was it just it is what it is i mean danny green he ended up with 13 points so he didn't really do that much more uh throughout the rest of the game the last three quarters of the game but uh, like i said it, it kind of is what it is um by second quarter uh by the end of the half i guess i'll, I'll, I'll kind of this video i'll kind of break it up by halves uh, that was kind of like the first quarter highlights, but the rest of the first half. Pascal ended with 14 points. Kawhi ended with 17. Like, as I said, they kind of focused their offense through a certain couple of players, and that was it. Uh, Joel Embiid at that point, though, he had 18 points, 4 for 8 shooting from the field. Um, he went 8 for 8 free throws, uh, 7 rebounds, and he only played 16 minutes as well, too. So that was really key for that team. 
Uh, ben Simmons kind of had a rough night. Uh, he had eight points in the first half. He went four for ten shooting and played 20 minutes. So, um, you know, you'd kind of expect for maybe Ben Simmons to have a better uh, game because he, you know, he's, he's like, what is he, 6'8 or 6'9, whatever he is. And who, who's guarding him typically? It's like Kyle Lowry, sometimes Danny Green as well, too. Sometimes Kawhi Leonard is. It just kind of depends. But for the majority of the time, he's a point guard. He's going up against Kyle Lowry, who's another point guard as well, too. And. I don't know. They just he couldn't he couldn't really take advantage of it, even though he's got like six seven inches on on Kyle Lowry, and he has a couple of inches depending on who if he's being guarded by Danny Green or what. Danny Green's not a bad defender though, so you kind of give him a break with that. But uh, he didn't have a great game either. Uh, ben Simmons did end the game with ten points, seven assists, seven rebounds, but thirty six minutes and five of thirteen shooting. So again, not not as efficient as you'd like. Again, you want him to be more more. Um, you know, confident in his shooting. You want him to be more aggressive, but that's kind of at this point we know that's kind of what Ben Simmons does. He doesn't he doesn't do a lot um, offensively except for setting up his teammates and getting a lot of layups and dunks. Which I mean, it is your game, so no big deal with that. Um, but as a whole, uh, the Seventy Sixers did kind of you know they they pretty much outperformed the Raptors in the entire game. The first quarter, or the, I'm sorry, the first half, the Seventy Sixers did hit three more threes in them. Uh, seven more rebounds and had, but had three more turnovers than the Raptors did as well too. This is kind of a callback to Game uh, Two when the 76ers did go to halftime, and they were crushing the crushing the Raptors as far as assists went, rebounds went, uh, you know things like that. Field goal percentage, uh, three point field goal percentage, excuse me. Uh, but the big problem was the the turnovers. Uh, the 76ers had 12. Uh, Raptors had four. So the problem, the thing is, is like with the with the 76ers, you you lead. You we have we've had this this reoccurring issue where you've kind of stuffed the stat sheet with every other category. Can you keep the turnovers down? Can you mitigate that a little bit? Bring it down a little bit and. And not, not let the Raptors kind of build off of that, build off of your turnovers. And that's really the key to their game. Now, they're going to be fantastic, like I said, rebounding, assist, fast break, things like that. Typically, as long as they're trying, as long as they're hustling on the boards and things like that, hustling in their offense, executing things like that. But the problem is, is the turnovers. Can you eliminate turnovers? Um, can you, at least if you can't eliminate them, can you kind of bring them down to a controllable, like an allowable number? Like, you don't have to have less turnovers than the other team does to get a win, but bringing down the turnovers to a smaller amount, not letting that kind of be the outlier in your stats, will go a long way in winning winning games. Now, something that I wanted to highlight uh, in the third quarter was just a clean uh, possession. I thought it was fantastic. A really good uh, pass by um, Kyle Lowry. But what happened was Kawhi Leonard was posting up. This is about 3.30 left in the third quarter. He posted up, uh, passed it out to Kyle Lowry at the three-point line, and then he just threw a bullet pass to Pascal Siakam, and it looked fantastic. Siakam finished with a dunk. Um, you'll see that in the highlights, but I just wanted to highlight that specifically because it was a clean look. It was a fantastic play, and that was honestly that was one of the fewer highlights, uh, I guess I'll say it that way, uh, for the for the Raptors in the third and the, really in the second half altogether. Uh, jumping over into the fourth quarter, though, this is kind of where it got ugly. Right around like 9:40 left in the game, so a few minutes into the fourth quarter, Joel Embiid had a huge block on Pascal Siakam. About 9:40 um, in the uh, in left in the game, uh, Jimmy Butler did also have a huge steal on Gasol. Uh, he got a fast break dunk, and that actually kind of, you they showed like Allen Iverson because he was at the game tonight. Uh, they showed Allen Iverson on the bench or on in the stands, whatever. And he got pumped too. So, you know, obviously if Allen Iverson's getting pumped, 76ers are getting pumped, any fan is getting pumped at that point. But um, those two plays specifically for the 76ers were on 11-0 run. That, that put them on an 11-0 run, excuse me. And, again, that place was rocking. They were ready to support the 76ers tonight. Uh, Jimmy Butler did have a great game, great game as far as pick and roll as well too. Um, that's kind of what, you, if you notice in the second half, that's really what they focus on with Jimmy Butler. He's a good ball handler. He's a small, he's a smart player. Excuse me. He's strong. He's tough. That kind of thing. Um, Jimmy Butler did end with 22 points, nine assists, nine rebounds. He shot really efficiently as well too. He went nine to 15 from the field, but one of five from from three point line. So um, he didn't really have that bad of a game. The only knock would probably be that he just didn't, he wasn't that efficient. But I mean. 
from the three-point line, but who cares at this point? Like, he had a great game, in my opinion, did a re- really good job, and really showed that leadership role that we know that he can do, whether it was with he- when he was with the Timberwolves or the Chicago Bulls. Um, I guess I probably shouldn't bring up the Timberwolves because <laughs> there was a lot of drama with him in the Timberwolves, but uh, when he needed to be a leader, he really showed out and did a really good job, in my opinion. Um, now, Joel Embiid had a blast of a night. Like I said, I, I felt like he, in every single quarter, he was really having fun. Like, he was laughing. He was energized. The whole team got pumped up when he's playing good. And honestly, it just looked like he was having fun again. He's had some issues with injuries um, in the you know the first couple rounds in the playoffs. Um, they also had a question, he, whether he was questionable or not, to start the game because of, um, I think, his stomach bug that was still messing with him a little bit. If I remember correctly, that's what it was. But honestly, I can't do it justice if I was able to. I, I, I picked a few dunks specifically that Joel Embiid just kind of crushed it at. But I wouldn't be doing him justice if I just labeled these few. So um, he, he had a fantastic night. Highlights, you're seeing them on the screen. He was stuffing the sh- stat sheet tonight all night long. Had some fantastic plays. Uh, the Probably the biggest dunk, though, was about 5.30 left in the game. Uh, what happened was he pump faked. And Pau Gasol was he was kind of going up to the three point line to uh, close out on Joel Embiid. Uh, Joel Embiid did a small uh, a short pump fake. It really wasn't even that. A, it didn't even look that good of a pump fake. Honestly, it was just like a normal pump fake, really. And then um, uh, Gasol couldn't get back in time. Joel Embiid just kind of walked right by him. Essentially, lane was wide open, and then he had this windmill dunk. It was like there's no defense. There's no effort on the defensive end for the Raptors. It was just really weird. Uh, by by four minutes left in the quarter, though, both teams had subbed out, you know, subbed in, subbed out their their star players and put in their their bench players at that point. So it was basically a runaway game for the 76ers. This was something they needed. Um, you know, it's not over. Like I mean, yeah, I mean, the 76ers are up two one, but I mean, like the Raptors were up one zero and they had another game uh, in Toronto, and the 76ers stole that game. So the 70, the Raptors could steal this game from the 76ers on Game Four. So. Um, you just have to come back, play your, play your basketball. Um, honestly, if there's one highlight for the Raptors, though, because I do need to mention a little bit about the Raptors here, was Kawhi Leonard was, again, Kawhi Leonard. He does what he does every single night. Um, 33 points, 3 assists, 5 rebounds. He did have 5 turnovers, and he did shoot thir- 13 from 22 from the field, so not bad. 2 for 4, 3 point, and 5 for 5 free throws, 36 minutes. He didn't have any steals, though. He did have one pretty big block, though. Um, 4 rebounds, like I said, so... And honestly, it's just—it's not just the stats with Kawhi Leonard. If you watch the game, you're seeing he was really the only one that looked like they even cared to play defense tonight. And that's especially in the second half, uh, whenever the 76ers were going on their run. So, uh, I mean, if I mean, it's it's doable. You could come back. Obviously, it's, the series isn't over yet. You know, like if you saw that game where uh, Paul Pierce had ruled out uh, the Bucks from beating the Celtics or whatever after the Celtics won one game. It's like, it's stupid. It's stupid. You can win these games. It's a seven-game series. Just come out locked in, ready to go. And like I said, the 76ers won game two in Toronto. Toronto can win game four in Philly. So, um, as always, guys, that was pretty much it. That was my recap video of game four. I'm sorry, game three. Joel Embiid crushed it. Uh, Jimmy Butler did really good as well, too. Kawhi Leonard was probably the only highlight from the Toronto Raptors. Uh, But I guess Pascal, Pascal Siakam did play really well. He had 20 points. Uh, 7 of 15 shooting. Didn't make a 3, though. Uh, that's okay. I mean, you can't have it all. But he had some really bonehead mistakes. Like, one time, Joel Embiid had that big big block on him in the third quarter. And he tried to trip him. And they're they're really good friends, so you don't really expect that from them. But I don't think it was anything really malicious. It was just kind of like he just did it, like, you know, kind of like an instinct. And then, like, as soon as it happens, you're like, oh, crap, why did I do that? I think it was kind of one of those things. I don't think that he had any, um, you know, direct harm towards Joel Embiid. Uh, it is his legs, though, so you got to be worried about it because he does have leg injuries. But um, it, is, it is what it is, guys. That was game three, like I said, of the Toronto-Philadelphia series. Tomorrow we've got a doubleheader, Milwaukee versus Boston, and then the late night game is Denver versus uh, Portland. Both those series have been pretty good so far, so uh, I'll have those recap videos out for you guys tomorrow. Uh, remember, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.